Hi everyone, this is Evo at the Velvet Overlook Recording Studios in Tilburg. Welcome to this third installment of Detouch Tips and Tricks. In episode 2, I showed you how to make macros in Detouch. Well, this time, we're going to take that a little further and make macro folders. Now, what we're going to do is make a floating window with frequently used edit commands like copy, paste, split region, delete, and repeat. Now, the macros we'll assign and their layout is just an example. Obviously, you can take this idea and customize it however you like. If you come up with something really cool, however, be sure to let us know in the comment section. Okay, let's get to it. The first thing we need is an empty slot for a macro. As you can see in the lower left-hand corner of my screen, I have a vacant slot. Just like I showed you in episode 2, touch and hold this button to open the macro editor. I'm going to tap Add New, and from the drop-down menu of Type, choose Folder. Let's name it Edit Tools, and the same for the button text. We'll leave the color gray for now. Now, in this case, we'll want to turn off the function Close Detouch Macro Folder Window when the macro is launched. Later, I'll show you a situation where you'd want to leave this function checked. Now, let's save this and hit Assign Macro to Button. The window will close, and you'll see your Macro Folder button has appeared. When you tap that, your still empty folder window will open. Now, you can add macros to that in exactly the same way as I showed you in the previous video. I'll quickly show you how to make one for split region, or separate clip at selection as it's called in Pro Tools. The keyboard shortcut for this command is Command and E. I'm going to touch and hold an empty macro button. Tab Add New and choose Macro. I'll name it Edit Split and for the button text enter Split. Disable Hide Detouch Windows while the macro is running. Like in Episode 2, first add Bring Pro Tools Window to Foreground command to be sure you're sending the key combination to Pro Tools and not to another app. After that, for command type, choose Keyboard Shortcut. If you have trouble scrolling through the window, you can either use the scrolling function on another input device, like a mouse or a trackpad, or touch and hold a random command type, and then move your finger up and down to scroll accordingly. Once you've highlighted the correct option, just let go and it'll be selected. In this case, keyboard shortcut. Then hit Command and E on your keyboard, and verify that the key combination box now says Command E. If so, press Add. Select another Bring Pro Tools window to foreground, and press Add again. Now, all we need to do is press Save, and then assign Macro to Button. I've already prepared macros for the basic edit functions, so I'll just quickly populate the macro window with them. Since it's tricky to close the windows by tapping the little red dot, I've added a Close Windows button using the command W key combination. Be careful though, in this case you don't want to start the macro with a Bring Pro Tools window to foreground, because then it'll close one of your Pro Tools windows instead. I said I'd show you a situation where you'd want to have the function Close Detouch Macro Folder Window when the macro is launched activated. I have a macro folder here labeled Tracks, which has all my track show and hide markers in it. When I choose one of these markers, I prefer that the macro folder window closes automatically, unlike with the floating edit window we've just created. Well, that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I'm looking forward to reading your ideas about it in the comment section. Next time, we're going to delve a little deeper into editing audio with Detouch, and I'll show you how to use this floating macro folder while you edit.